Welcome to Beyond the Shoots is presented by Parasite Systems. I'm your host today, Doug Simcox, and I'm recording at my daughter Kathleen's house up here in Corden, Indiana. A bit of trivia for you. I don't know if you know this, but Corden, which is just up across the river, just a bit west of Louisville, up across the Ohio River, used to be, at one time, was the state capital of Indiana. So kind of a cool little town, small little town. I hope that you're doing well as we head into the final months of rodeo. I hope you're staying safe. hope you're staying healthy. The fall weather is headed our way. Cooler days are coming. The leaves are starting to turn. And up north, you've got to have some very bright colors going on. And as you travel to all these rodeos up and down the road, stay safe. Keep your eyes up. Hands free as you take us with you on your travels. Two hands on the wheel. And again, we want to say how much we appreciate being able to go with you on your travels. And I know a lot of you folks are traveling overnight, long runs, long days, big days. So be safe as you go up and down the road. A couple of shout outs. Uh, The BTC bus is back on the road. I want to say thank you to Shelbyville Diesel and Machine Repair, Shane and Henry, right there in Shelbyville, Kentucky. What a great job they did. They, uh, they went through the truck from the from front bumper to the rear bumper, did all the right things, put us back on the road. And speaking of being on the road, the first weekend of October, uh, we're going to be at Mike Swearingen's birthday and rodeo reunion up there in Wyoming, New York, up around Rochester. So excited to go up there. We're going to see a lot of friends and a lot of folks from the Northeast. No doubt we're going to come away with a lot of great stories. And today in our episode, we have Randy Steffen back with us, Heiko, Texas. His his episode came out last week. This is part two. And at the end of every recording that I do with my guests, with our guests, I always remind them that if memories come up that they went, oh, I should have said this or I should have told that story, simply give me a call. And he did. And we had two great conversations after the initial recording. So more stories and adventures. And man, he covers a lot of ground. We had so much fun. What I really enjoy about doing this podcast is that I get to meet new people like Randy and Marilee, his wife. And her episode's going to be coming out here in two weeks. And just having great great conversations and learning about different folks. It's through those relationships that we begin to see the world maybe just a bit different and we understand how many things we have in common and how interesting these people are around us. So we hope that you enjoy this episode. We were at a rodeo in Illinois somewhere and they had a skydiver that was supposed to land in the arena well he jumped out of the plane and come close to the arena and missed the arena and he landed on the back of my pickup horse and fell to the ground and merely was holding the horse and the cords from the parachute got tangled around the saddle horn and of course the horse took off dragging this guy through the parking lot and I think about every every cowboy at the rodeo was out there helping trying to catch the horse and we finally, we finally got the horse stopped and everything was all right. And Good needless Lord. to say, I was a little upset. And I, I started to go to this guy and I remember a cowboy grabbing me and said, no, your horse is okay. Your horse is okay. But everybody was more concerned about the horse than they were this guy that just jumped out of a plane. You know, and that was, that was something th- that never happened again, probably. No, I would say not. Not even if you tried. <laughs> Not even no, if you try. It could have I, been quite spectacular, you know, land on oh, the back of a Yeah. You guys. I could imagine with a tangle on that saddle horn and strings and oh. horse dragging this. I wonder what this guy was thinking, you know. We, I believe it was Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Steve Gander had a rodeo out there and he hired Spider Man. And I believe it was the original Spider Man to, to go around talking to the kids in the arena. Well, he wanted to ride a horse as he did his little spiel. Well, he didn't tell us he didn't know how to ride. Well, he gets on the horse and goes out there. 
the horse takes off into a lope and he's loping around the arena and this guy's hollering for help. And I, I rode in on my pickup horse and caught caught the horse up and and he's going, Oh, get me off this horse, get me off this horse. And all the time the kids in the stands are hollering, Shoot your web, shoot your web <laughs> And so I got the guy to the reentry gate, and he got off, and he walked out there and did his little talk. Okay. <laughs> he didn't want, the... want no part of the horse anymore. Enough of that. Enough of that. Yeah, it was it was really funny to see the Spider Man flopping around. <laughs> uh, and, and, yeah, that's how. How in the world did Steve find? I mean, we we heard about Festus. We heard about and, Hoss off a of Gunsmoke, right? Um, all right, all right. And Dollar, how did he get access to these to these these pretty cool acts? Actually, yeah, I don't know. Steve had access to, but all, all the country singers he knew, you know, how he could get hold of them and what they charged, and you know, yeah. he just he had a way of finding out finding things, you know. Yeah, but he he was a great promoter. Yeah, we never talk about my main horse, old Buck. He was a main pickup horse. He was a 16-hand buckskin gildan, and he was part saddlebred and part draft horse. Oh, and wow. how he ever being a good horse, you know, that breeding, but he was a cutting horse. I bought him as a three-year-old. They were turning back at the cuttings on him, and I bought him and went ahead and finished him as a cutting horse. And he ended up being a champion cutting horse in northern Illinois, Cutting Horse Association like six years in a row. Wow. And uh, been to the Congress. He placed in the Congress of Cuttings. I mean, he just, he was a whale of a horse, and I went to picking up on him after that. And he would just made a super pickup horse. He could run, had a lot of handle on him. He's, he, was, he was a horse that made me as far as in rodeos. Everybody knew that horse and loved him. Buck. You know, he, was, okay. he was a great horse. Weighed, okay. Probably weighed thirteen fifty. Oh, big horse, big horse. But could run. He command. He could run. And and uh, if he's a cutting horse, he's pretty cowy, right? So oh, he he had more cow in him. I mean, <laughs> man, he could cow. Yeah. And for our listeners, yeah. Randy, I think that's the first time I've used that term. Maybe we yeah. have in the past, but what's it mean if a horse is cowy? It means that when they they look at cattle and they they're interested in them and. And they they want to go with they want to work the cow. Okay. You know, they're cowy. Some horses you put in front of a cow, and they look the other way. Yeah. Well, a horse that shows interest, that pin his ears and look at him, and that's called cowy. You know. Okay. They when 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 they move with the cow. Okay. And and I know you push bulls out during the bull riding, right? You don't right. pick up, but you push him out. How was he during the bull riding? Oh, he was great. I roped a lot of bulls on him. And, Drug a lot of bulls out on him. Yeah. Did that cowiness come through? Did he want to work them? Well, he, you know, he, he's dragging them, so he really wasn't looking at them, you know. Okay. But, yeah. But, I mean, he was cowy. He, he run calves and sears out. He wouldn't have to pick the reins up. He just, you know. The one, the one rodeo I, well, maybe two rodeos, I pulled his bridle off and picked up the saddle bronc crying with no bridle. No. Yeah. Intentionally you did that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> his horse was broke now. I mean, you just get all his mane, and you could he'd spin him left or right, and whoa, and go. And I just jerked his bridle off, and <laughs> everybody looked. What have your bridle? I said, I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> now that's yeah. something. That's that's quite a trained horse. That is really. Oh cool. yeah, he was he, he was a fa- outstanding horse. He lived. To, I got him when he was three, and he he died at twenty nine. He oh, wow. you know he had a good life. And, he was really nice. Never took a bad step in his life. He stayed sound. You know, he just was just a good horse, you know. And and how long how old was he when you stopped working with him? Stop stop hauling him. Twenty twenty two I quit using him. Okay. I was riding him out there one day and he all had all sorts of go, you know. Drop your hand, he'd go. And one time I dropped my hand and he didn't he didn't he didn't want to go. I mean he went, but he kind of had, had to ask him, and I said, well, he's telling me something. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's saying, hey, you know, I've had about enough. Yeah. So I didn't push him. I said, okay, I'm listening to you, and I retired him. Oh, wow. Isn't that you something? Could just, you could just feel it was time, you know. You bet. You bet. 
You know, and that's something we haven't talked a lot about on the show, that partnership, you know, that deep, deep, deep relationship that uh, yeah. developed, right, with your horse. And right. he moves he moves beyond just being a horse, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, he was, he was, he was a friend. I mean, he was, he knew me and I knew him and I knew what he was going to do and he knew what I was going to do. Yeah. So, great so, horse. Great. great horse. So, so how'd you find him? I mean, three-year-old, he's already starting cutting half draft horse, half saddlebred. Not, not your typical quarter horse. Right? No, no, he wasn't. He wasn't. You know, he had the, the draft horse heaviness, but he had the saddlebred. He, he was real high stepping, you know. Okay. You know, everybody said he would merely carry the flag on him, that he danced to the music because he just, he'd really get up there and step like a saddle bron saddle bread. Oh, wow. But, okay. Now, I, a friend of mine in Bloomington, Illinois, Don Ellis, cutting horse man, had him. I called him one day. I said, I, I want to buy a cutting horse. He said, well, I ain't got one, but I got a turn back horse that will make one. So we drove down there and I, I rode as I liked him, you know, and he, he was only three years old and really, really bronky, snorty, and but so I ended up buying him and brought him home and worked him on cows and got him cutting really good and went on from there and there wasn't nothing I couldn't do on him. We hazed hazed on him, merrily barrel raced him. I mean, just everything you could do on one we did. So when you say he he, he had a turn back horse. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, when the cutting horse when the cutting horse goes in to cut a cow, you've got two turnback men that push the cattle back towards the cutting horse so that he can work them, you know. Okay. Okay, and that's and what that he was, was doing, even at three years that old. That was what he was doing, you know. Okay. He wasn't cutting, but he was he was moving the cattle. He could t take a pretty good horse and do that with, you know. So why you know, what why were you looking for a cutting horse, Randy? What was what was going on? Oh, I just, I always like cutting, and I said, you know, I'd like to get into it, you know. And we ended up getting him, and we took off, and we cut for years. Oh, wow. You know, I, I was president of the Cutting Horse Association for two years and in the Illinois, northern Illinois and Wisconsin. We did all them cuttings up there. And so, a lot of fun. It was great. So you were riding as a, the cutting horse? You were riding? Oh, by? yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. And, and, and. Larry Mahan was big in that too, and I know we talked about him earlier. Did um, did, did you ever talk cutting horses with him? Yeah, Larry. Larry he rode cutting horses for a long time, you know. And then we yeah we used to sit and talk cutting horses all the time. Yeah. And and yeah. you got to have a heck of a seat to ride a cutting horse. Oh yeah, yeah. These these guys nowadays are pretty <laughs> pretty good, you know. Did what did you notice when you started cutting? Did you have to learn to ride just a touch different? I mean, these these guys are these horses are so fast in the front end. Yeah, well, you you just got to find out what your horse is doing and go with them, you know, and yeah. help them where they need help. And you know, okay. they've got these flags now that they put on a pulley that goes back and forth, and the guy's got a remote on their arm. Oh wow! And they can they they can work that back and forth by just pressing a button. And that's you know, how they're training them. Well, that's how they start them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know, if the horse is not doing something just right on a real cow, they'll go to that flag where they can set it up. A real cow, you really can't set them up to make a mistake. So you let them make a mistake where you can set it up so you can correct it. Okay. It, it was a pretty good idea. Okay. Okay. And big money in cutting. Oh, boy. I've got a friend of mine down the road, uh, Kobe Wood. He's been world champion cutting horse man a long time. And we go over there to watch him cut sometimes. And he'll have 18 horses saddled in the arena. Really? Okay. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. And these aren't $750 horses, Randy. No, no. They're not even $7,500. They're big, big money horses. So what is big money? If a guy wanted to get in and be... Be be moderately competitive, right? What do you what are you uh, talking for? Four forty, fifty thousand probably. Okay. Okay. You know. Just like the barrel horses, they they're high they're so high too, you know. You bet. Fifty thousand not much for not much for a good barrel horse anymore. Okay. What are you seeing for numbers out there in the world on the barrel racing? Numbers as far as what? Dollars. Hot horses. 
you know, 40, 50, you said that's kind of bottom, bottom level that's, these days. Well, that's kind of average, you know, okay. you can buy a pretty, pretty good horse for 50,000. Yeah. My, my son's got a couple of them over there. Okay. They're, they're pretty nice horses, you know. They cost them 30 to 50, I guess. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And and what did you pay for Buck when you got him as a three-year-old? $600. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Wow. And believe me, that was tough to come up with the 600 Yeah, that was a lot of money back then, right? Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of money back then. But I even got the receipt from him. I kept in the scrapbook, you know. Okay. And everybody goes, you only get 600 for that horse? I said, yeah. And he was worth $160,000. So, I was concerned. So did that, did your cutting cut into your rodeoing? I mean, that, were you cutting for money? Was it buckles? What were you going for? Yeah, we were cutting for money and buckles. You know, I won a bunch of buckles on cutting on him. And it wasn't big money, you know. It was just a small association in Northern Illinois. Yeah. But when we go to the bigger shows like Congress in Ohio, yeah. it was big money there, you know. Okay. Okay. And and you did well at the Congress in Columbus. Yeah, yeah. I was one time out of 45, which was pretty good. You did what out of 45? Third. Third, third. place out of 45. Okay. And in the Open Cup, yeah, that was okay. That was a pretty good hit. And and do you got to go hard and consistently to be able to place third in, in a competition that size? In other words, are you out going every weekend somewhere? Well, I, locally, mm -hmm. never went very far in the cutting deal. Okay. You know, kind okay. of stayed in the area, you know. Yeah. But it was okay. more, I just liked it, you know. Yeah. You know, you get one of the cutting horses underneath you, it's just, wow, it's a great feeling. Oh, that's neat. That's neat. Okay. Good old Buck. Good old Buck. He's, I never forget him. I got pictures of him all over. Okay. Well, send me a picture or two of Buck. I remember at the Cut North Fraternity in Fort Worth, they'd have five judges. And they'd be sitting in little, like, tree stands, you know, when so they can't see each other. Mm -hmm. And at night, when the cutting's over, they had a, a security take them to the hotels, so they couldn't talk to each other. Oh, really? Okay. And they weren't they weren't allowed to talk to each other, the judges, through the whole, the whole cutting deal. Yeah. They'd go to the hotel and then they'd pick them up and take them back. And then, yeah, you know. Now in the cutting then, performance, it's all judged, or is time part of it? Well, they get two and a half minutes, and usually they cut from and every three cows in two and a half minutes. Some guys will cut two cows, you know, mm -hmm. but it's it's not not a time deal. It's scoring on the horse, you know. Okay. Okay. And, I mean, if I could come out and do really, really well on just one and it takes me 30 seconds, would I place? Or do I got to, I I mean, is it then time comes in? No, you got two and a half minutes. You got to do more than one steer. Yeah, you've, you've got to eat up your whole two and a half minutes. Okay, okay. You know, you, you've got to keep going. If they got a clock, usually a big clock behind them and they can see how much time they got. They got 90 seconds or 30 seconds and. They just go get another cow or else kind of mosey around, taking it easy, trying to eat up time. But most of them will grab a third cow and, you know, try to gather more points. Okay. Okay. It's, wow. it's a pretty good deal at cutting nowadays. Yeah. And you got out because you said, I'm taking Buck to the, to the, going to start picking up on him. That was kind of where yeah. you went? Yeah. I just, I knew he was a good horse and I just went to picking up on him because we were doing more rodeos and. And cuttings, you know. Yeah. 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 And never tempted through through the rest of the time to get back into it, dabble back into oh, cutting? We went through a few of them off and on, you know. But, you? Okay. You know, you know, he just he wasn't fine tuned yeah. anymore after picking up Bronx, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that cut you you gotta you gotta stay hitched to them horses. Then then people will open them horses for hours. Yeah, yeah. You know, be just before they even go to a cow, you know. You bet, you bet. You bet. Did you say they had like flags they worked? Yeah, they got a little uh, flag deal on a cable mm -hmm. that goes maybe 50, 75 foot along the wall. Mm -hmm. And some people put a calf on it, you know. Yeah. 
doll calf or something. Yeah. Then the guy's got a remote on his wrist. Okay. And he can stop it, make it go back and forth any way he wants. So he can correct the horse's bad on one side. He can correct that by that way. Oh, my goodness. You know, if you're on a live cow, you don't know what the cow is going to do. But that deal, you can make it do what you want. Okay. It's a pretty good tool. That's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. Yeah. yeah. They used to have one that was a looked like a Hereford bull with horns, and you'd get in, get inside it and drive it, and that, that thing really worked good. Oh wow! They could they could spin that around. I don't know why they, they quit using them, but you had to have somebody drive it. But man, it was cool. And <laughs> you could that thing would spin on spin like a dime. Now, did you did you do a lot of training on him to cut, or did, was he just oh, enough yeah. natural? I mean, you worked him no, like all no, week. No. No, you 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 gotta you gotta work them, you know. You gotta you gotta get them fine tuned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it isn't something you just let them sit all week and go to a cutting. Yeah, you know you yeah. gotta you gotta have them have them have them right or right because there's so many guys in there that got great horses, you know. Yeah, and what 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 did you do for 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 him throughout the year when you're picking up? What did you do to keep him legged up and conditioned? Oh. Um, we would just, we'd ride them, you know, and yeah. we had a hot walker. We'd get on and put them on the hot walker. And, you know, cause the winter times was the rough times. Yeah. You know, yeah. like when I, when I was doing the finals in January, picking up the finals, I, I'd always load my horses up and go to the indoor arena and ride them at night. Okay. You know, for, two, for two weeks ahead of time. Yeah. We'd go over every night to ride, keep these horses rode because you couldn't ride them outside, you know, so snow and ice yeah and that time of the year i mean you're going to bring them into a building you they were they outside mostly or were you, were you did you no, have them installed they were, all, they were they were all stalled in the winter okay. turn outside okay. during the day and okay stalled at night so they had a good winter coat then oh yeah yeah, yeah well, a lot of like old my old buckskin horse i'd body clip him Oh, okay. You know, okay. Because he got hairy all yeah. day long here. Yeah. But then I'd keep a blanket and hood on him all winter, you know. Okay. Okay. Because you take him over and get him in that indoor arena and get him hot, and then the hair never dries. You know, you can't haul him home for an hour or so afterwards. And yeah. It was just easier to body clip him and go from there. Okay. And you did all your finals was in Tulsa. They were all in Tulsa. Uh, I think we did Oklahoma City towards the end. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Most of them were Tulsa, but yeah. I think the last one we did in Oklahoma City and then a couple before. Okay. And weather that time of the year is not, I mean, it can be cold, but, but was okay yeah. for the most part? Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Probably better than, 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 around the lake there in illinois huh oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah pretty brutal around there oh man that's some of the stuff i don't miss by by living in in louisville still in the zebra business zebras you know we yeah we we had a i lived in illinois i had a herd of zebras and we raised colts every year and sell the colts and had a bunch of mares and I had a breeding, a little breeding deal. How did you get in yeah. the zebra business? Well, everybody said you couldn't do anything with a zebra. Yeah. And I said, well, I got I bet I can. And I, I bought one one time and broke them to ride and, and, uh, and went on from there. And we, over the years, we broke a bunch of them to ride. You never could trust them really good, but, you know, but. So how did they we, compare to a horse as far as mentality, as far as well, you know, disposition? Their their idea is to get away from you, you know. Like the old saying is, a horse will do what you ask him. A zebra wants to see your resume, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, just out of a well, I can do it kind of gumption. You yeah, said I'm gonna buy it. me a zebra and I'm gonna train him, and then the rest you just got busy with it. Right, and I I went through a few of them. And I went maybe I maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. Hmm. And then all of a sudden, one time I got a pretty good zebra and we broke him. Yeah. And Marley rode him in parades at oh, rodeos. Wow. Oh, wow. You know, I mean, he was really good zebra, broke to ride, and I sold him. Finally sold him to a lady that just had to have him. Okay. 
and uh, she kept until he was 26 when he died. Really? Okay, so yeah. pretty much built like a horse, pretty much the oh, same? Oh, yeah, but they're not, about 50 inches tall like a big Welsh pony. Okay, and disposition, are they kind of like a pony kind of a disposition well, or... they're they're kind of more on the wild side it's, it's really it's really hard to get a good one i mean you go through a bunch of them before you got one that wants to play with you mm -hmm. you know and, mm -hmm. and we went through quite a few of them and the zebras that you're you're still in the zebra business yeah and you you, you sell the colt where yeah just they go all over zebras zebras are really easy to sell are know? they really my, okay my son had one Last week, he took to the local horse sale in Cleburne, Texas. He brought 21000 and he was a week old. A zebra for 21000 yeah. I mean, so... He was a week old. So they're going to put him on an exotic animal farm? Oh, who knows? Zoo? Who, no, who knows? No. Holy Probably just somebody cow. with a lot of money, and they wanted something different. My he goodness. He was a nice, nice little colt. But okay. My wife raises a lot of zebras on, you know... She doesn't give them a bottle, gives them a bucket of milk, but raises them on milk. Really? When they're three days old. Okay. You wean and, them and that, that early them. or the mom shuts them down? What, what happens? Well, if you get them that early, you kind of imprint them and, you know, oh. uh, and they learn people instead of the herd of zebras and stay wild, you know? Yeah. And, and it doesn't always work a lot. We've had a lot of them that we raise in a bucket that still didn't want to be nice, but then we've had some that were really super nice. And, mm. We had one that was so nice one time, and people came from New Mexico to buy them, and they pulled in the yard, and they didn't have a trailer with them. And I went, oh, these are tire kickers. And yeah. So they ended up, ended up buying them. I said, well, how are you going to haul them? Well, they put them in the back seat of the truck. Inside the cab. Inside the cab. What, <laughs> and, what could go and, wrong with that, right? Yeah, what could go wrong with that? And, he sent me a video on the zebra had his head on his shoulder oh. other driving on the road. <laughs> oh my. It was pretty neat, you know. Okay. So you do, do that with every one of them, but uh, so they're wild. Are they mean? I mean, do you just gotta watch yeah, them? Oh my they, goodness. Yeah, they, they, can, they can be pretty mean. Okay. You know, they can if you get them riled up, they can bite, they can kick, of that sort of thing. Oh yeah, bad to kick, I'm bad to bite. Yeah. You know. I've got one here now, a gilding that is Super, super tame. I mean, you can do anything with them. Yeah. You, I got a little act on them. You can get all voice commands, work at liberty, get them on a pedestal, bow down, really? lay down. Really? Are He's you really are you hauling one. him? No, we don't do it. I just, just for my fun, I'd go out there and, and I, you can work him without putting anything on him. Just talk to him. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You say, get up on that pedestal, Joe. He'll walk over and get up on the pedestal. Oh, my gosh. Feet. Well, if we got some rodeo entertainers listening here, Randy, yeah. you might well, get no, some calls. To, no? I'm not about to go on the road anymore. I told Marilyn I should put her on the road, and she said, I've had enough. <laughs> well, if, yeah. if any rodeo entertainers give you a call and say, hey, I'm looking for a trick yeah. zebra. Yeah. If anything can go wrong, that's, that's what they'll do. They'll go wrong at a rodeo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, nah, this That's one amazing. I can, I trust this one. Do anything you can do, just do anything you want to do with it. Oh, that's neat. That is really, really. I, cool. did, I didn't get him broke to ride. But I used to. My son Wade used to ride him when he was younger, but kind of broke him of the habit. That's what he got bucked off a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. But, and I mean, yeah, they're he, built the same. They got withers. They got all that sort of thing, like a horse. Well, they don't have much withers. That's okay. the trouble. Okay, saddle you know, goes like over little, the top, like, like a big fat pony. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be done. Pretty neat. Okay. Well, we had them. We had the camels. Camels with them for a while. Yeah. Yeah. What were What was it like to have camels? Well, I did, I didn't know anything about them, and I bought one one day, a two year old, and I said, "Well, I'm gonna break them to ride." And so we flew with him for a while. I got him saddled and got up and got on him. And well, the first thing he did is turn his head around, grab the saddle horn in his mouth. Oh wow. <laughs> And I slid off the back of him, and I said, whoa. <laughs> we so, ended up getting him broke, and he, he rode pretty good. We rode him in parades and okay. different functions. He was pretty nice. And, and and we had a lot of camels over the years. You did. So yeah, so yeah. how would you get to introduce the camels, for goodness sakes? I just I always like something that's different, you know. Okay. You know, I didn't, you know something a little flair to it, you know. Yeah. Not everybody did camels. Not everybody did zebras. You know, 
And and don't they, they spit at you? Camels? They can. Yeah. They they can, but them kind you get rid of. You don't keep those kind okay. around. Okay. Yeah. You okay. You know, you can get some that'll never spit. Yeah. And you can get some that spit all the time, you know. I'll be darned. Okay. I'll be darned. And where'd you buy the camel? How'd you even find a camel? Oh, they're easy to find. Are they really? I look, I look out the door and my son's got half a dozen of them in his yard. He's got some white, pure white ones, too. Camels? Yeah. Okay. And so he, you you got him into this business, into the exotic animal business? Right. And he's, okay. he's really into it. I mean, yeah. if you name it, he's got it there. Really? Okay. Yeah. I mean, every kind of antelope and you know, every, I mean, it's there, everything. Okay. Zebras, camels. Okay. Wildebeest. He's got a, he's got a whole lot of stuff. What's the what's the coolest one he's got? What's the coolest animal if he's? Well, I kind of like the wildebeest myself. They're kind of a pretty blue color and kind of wild looking. Okay. And they're not domesticated. You don't walk up. No, and pet no, them. they're 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 from Africa and they're pretty pretty wound up. You know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And no elephants. No elephants. We. Get a chance to be around a bunch of elephants and and tigers. I worked worked with some tigers for a while. You worked with tigers. Yeah, there was a down in Illinois. There was a friend of mine, a circus trainer from Florida, came up to work. This guy had like forty elephants and had a bunch of white tigers that he was training for a circus act. Well, this buddy of mine came up, Lancelot Ramos was his name. He was from Florida, and he came up, and he'd work the tigers, and he'd have us come, pull us come over and watch them. So every morning we'd go over there, Marilyn and I, and we'd sit outside the cage and watch him work these tigers, and he'd work fourteen at a time, and it was just so impressive. I mean, he had him doing everything. I mean, he got into a cage with fourteen different tigers at the same oh, time. Oh yeah, he, yeah, it was. He, and we're the only people there was him and his wife and Marilyn and me. And I thought, well, if he ever gets in trouble, what, yeah. what would we do? Yeah. What would you do? So well, sure enough. Yeah. Sure enough. One day, this female tiger, he said something to her and she come right to him. And I mean, she was coming to him. He was backing up. Yeah. And she, she meant business and he clunked her over the head and she stopped. And, okay. Well, then she just kept coming harder. And okay. He's backing up and backing up. And I thought, oh boy, yeah. this is it. Yeah. He clunked her a second time and she. She kind of quit and went back and sat down, but I said, oh, boy. Yeah. That yeah. was the closest I ever seen anybody getting made up. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What a mess that would be, wouldn't it? So did <laughs> he, you get in the cage and work with him, Randy? Yeah. He said to me one day, he said, if we get done, he said, if I leave one in here, you want to come in and work him? I said, whoa, would I ever? <laughs> so he left, he got the rest of them out and left one in there for me. And, okay. And he I got up early. He said, "Don't you go in there?" She said, "That's the most stupid thing you could ever do." Yeah. Don't go in there. I yeah. said, "I have to. You I have, have to. to do it." Okay. So I went in there, and he told me what to do, and told me how to work him, and call his name, and he gave me a whip. He said, "Now use this whip. Don't hit him with it. Yeah. Just use it as a pointer. Yeah, okay. Up and down, okay. left and right. Okay. Okay. You know, and then we had a another little stick that he put a piece of meat on that you'd." When he did something good, you'd reach with a stick and give him a bite of meat. Okay. You didn't yeah, walk up and know. hand it to him. No, you did not hand it to him. <laughs> That's what you, mean. you didn't. You had a stick you put it on. But yeah. He just he just told me, he said, stay, stay far away so that he yeah. doesn't swipe you with his claws, you know. Okay. So I worked him. And he worked pretty good, and I got him to get on the pedestal and then got him to rear up and strike out and I think what an experience to stand in front of a tiger that's oh that's reared up and I can't imagine swiping his claws at you with his mouth open and growling. Yeah. It was pretty intense. That that would be intense. That would yeah, be intense. I went home, I was on a high for two days. I was all I was that was the most exciting thing I think I've I've ever did. Was, <laughs> ever done in my life was getting in cage with a tiger, you know. That's pretty amazing. That's that's yeah. pretty darn amazing. I had everybody told me Tiger people said that was the stupidest thing you ever did. He said that tiger didn't know you. Right. He knows that guy, but he didn't know you. Is that right? So <laughs> yeah. So but he but I mean it's all on. I I have to imagine you know it's all on. Do they do they sense who you are? Right. Do they sense oh, you're a serious that. guy? You know what I mean. I would imagine they they can figure you out in a heartbeat. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> 
And anyway, I, I survived. Yeah. And I thought if you if you're gonna go, what a way to go. What a way well, the to story go. Would be, yeah. The story of, of your passing would be unbelievable. What would what would the what would the title of that story be, Randy? What what would we call that? <laughs> Being a stupid enough to go in there with them. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. That is amazing. Yeah, it, it, it was pretty good. It was pretty intense, but it was fun, you know. Yeah. I always like to do the odd things, you know. Okay. And and was it the odd things that got you involved in rodeo? I mean, was it looking over the fence saying, I, I could do that? Yeah, exactly. I, well, like I said, I always had a horse when I was, yeah. from the time I was 12 years old, and got to watch a few rodeos in the summer, and I thought, man, I can do this. Mm -hmm. You know, but it was a long, hard road, but, you know, it just got better and better every year, you know. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's, I like that. The tiger story like and that, the zebra like story. Like that story with Marlon, how, how Marlon got started, you know? Yeah. That was, pretty, that was a pretty cool story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, what'd they do? They actually snuck in, didn't they? Something yeah, like that's that. Yeah, that's what he said, yeah. <laughs> Somebody gave him the, come and gave him the rig and the shafts and spurs. and <laughs> said it didn't work out too good, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's fun. Hard to make life entertaining, you know. Well, that that's certainly an exotic animals. I mean, that's that's the wild ones. That's pretty neat. No, no tie or no lions ever. No, no, no. You, you not you really can't have them, you know. Can't have them. No, not really. Okay. Yeah, you know, unless you're regulated with the USDA and that. I see. I see. Yeah. So that you don't want to be trading lions and tigers around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And no hippos or rhinos or no, gorillas no. or anything like that. Just a lot of monkeys, a lot of a lot of monkeys so, over the years. So what kind of monkeys? I know, I know capuchins, spider monkeys, capuchins. Is that what Marilee used in her act? She used a capuchin monkey. Okay. And where would you where back in the day? All right, let me let me back up. How did Marilee get that act started? Where in the world did she get monkeys, and how did she train them to ride a dog? Well, I I saw the act one time. A guy had a monkey riding a dog at the rodeo, and I thought, man, this would be kind of a neat act if we could find the monkeys. Well, I checked around some of my exotic people, and they gave me the number of a guy in Florida. Well, he'd send me three monkeys at a time, and we'd try them and keep the ones that would work and get rid of the ones that wouldn't. And so we, we trained them. And we were in the border collie business at that time. We had probably 30 border collie dogs we trained for working. Holy cow. For cattle? So, yeah. Cattle and sheep. And cattle goats and sheep. And, okay. For and competitions and that sort of thing? Yeah. We went to uh, sheep dog trials all over the country. You did? I went to them. Merrily went to them. Yeah. We traveled everywhere to go to sheep dog trial. And you were directing them. You were what? What's the language? Uh, you were competing. Uh, I was. I was a handler. Handler Marley was a handler. Okay. Yeah. And how many dogs would you take to a competition? How many would you well, enter in a week? Usually just one. Okay. One a piece, you know. Yeah. It's you know it had has to be a good one, you know. Yeah. And you trained them from a pup all the way up through. Right. We trained so, them and took them out to take the saddle and. Getting them used to the monkey was a little wasn't real fun, but yeah. Did they, they what they think of the monkeys? I mean, well, they seriously, like they didn't like, they didn't like it. Some of them did wouldn't go for it at all. You know, they yeah. said, "Well, oh, no monkey on my back." <laughs> we had three or four, maybe five, really good monkey dogs that okay. didn't mind. They didn't bother them a bit. Yeah, yeah. and and the training you used. What what is it? You send them out. You bring them back. I'm just thinking now of your 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 work and your. Yeah, what are some of the base commands you would teach, Randy, if you're working cattle well, or sheep? If the livestock's way far out, you want to send to the right. This is Scottish terms from Scotland. You say away, away, and then to the left, you'd say come by, come by. And then they'd get around behind them. Of course, you'd stop them, then get them to walk up straight. And then you could flank them left or right. And then you had to go through a bunch of different obstacles with the sheep. And then when you got through the obstacles, you had to put them in a pen. And then after you come out of the pen, then you, then you, your dog had to sort one sheep off and hold it like a cutting horse. Oh, wow. 
and he'd be standing there. You'd call your dog in, and he'd come in, in in the herd and take one off and work them back and forth, and and that would be the end of the competition. But I'll be done. We did that for a long time. So so, counting horses and hauling, rodeo and hauling, sheep dog trials and hauling. How you was? I mean, all this was going on kind of at the same time, Randy. Yeah, just about, just about. Was it all year long, all, all winter? Oh and yeah, when I'm, yeah, year round, year round. Okay. You know, especially when Steve Gander had them winter rodeos, you know, and all the buildings, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And well, it was something to do in, oh any my, month of the year. Oh my goodness, it sure sounds like it, and. And what was it like to have the monkeys? Because you had to handle the monkeys. The monkeys went with you on the road. Three monkeys. I love it. Yeah, they were. They were. We kept them with us. They slept with us in the camper, and you know, we didn't just throw them in a cage and forget about them. They were. They, we had two monkeys, Cisco and Pancho. We built them as the world's smallest cowboys. Mm-hmm. Well, they were just super, super gentle, and you could take them out and play with them. And okay, you know, we had some that yeah, I think were so nice. But, but these two, we had them for oh, over 20 years, I guess. Really? Okay. One monkey was, was 47 when he died. Wow. And we figured the other one was 35 or 6 when she died. Really? Had no idea yeah. they lived that long. And these aren't I very big either. monkeys, right? These are, what no, what they weigh? About six, about six pounds. About six pounds. Okay. Yeah, you had to try to get the, the lightest one you could, you know, for the dogs. Yeah. Sake, you know? Yeah. So, so you ran a barrel pattern with the dogs? What did no, you do? No, 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 no. We never did that. We, okay. We just, you just worked the sheep, you know. Oh, work, okay. So put the sheep through different obstacles and pen them so, with the dogs and the monkeys. So you had to haul sheep too? Oh, yeah. We haul our own sheep, and our monkeys, our dogs, our horses. Oh, my goodness. How big of a trailer did you have? I know you had big lo- yeah. living quarters. How many, how many places? Yeah. It was a six horse trailer. Six horse. Put six horses in there, and they had a twelve foot living apartment with everything you need. And you, you hauled? Uh, you didn't haul six horses, did you? No, we, we hauled like four. And then and sheep. Then the sheep and the goats and the monkeys were in the other other compartment. And you had goats. Sheep, sheep. Oh, oh sheep. Oh, I thought you said goats. Sheep and the and the dogs. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'll be darned. Wow. I don't, I don't know if I told you that one story when the guy sent me three monkeys from Florida. They, he sent them in a box. But you open the top it will, and to get them out. Well, I went in the, in the barn and shut the door in the tack room. And I opened the top of the box to get a hold of them. Well, of course, right then they all jumped out. And here comes the neighbor. He come walking and opened the door. <gasps> out the door, the monkeys go. Oh, my goodness. Three monkeys. Oh they God. run down the road, went in the hay field, and they're running through this hay field. I jump on a horse bareback. I go to chasing them, and they're out in the middle of this hay field, and I'm circling them, and they're they're scared to death, you know. They're afraid of the horse. And, yeah. And this, well, here come Marilee. She walked out there, and the monkeys were so scared, they run over to her. Oh, wow. And they jumped in her arms. Oh, wow. And she had to walk, oh, maybe an eighth of a mile back to the house. And she had a hold of their legs and their tails. They were biting her oh, and wow. screaming. Yeah. She got she got big in her. She had monkey bites all over. But, you know, she never turned them loose. Okay. She held on to the very end. Okay. Well, that had to be yeah. frightening for them monkeys. They don't oh. know where they are, right? No, they didn't know what was going on, you know. And they see a horse chasing them, but they, they ended up being okay after we got them gentled down. So they they, they sent you the monkeys in a box. UPS, I take it? No, O'Hare Airport in Chicago. Okay. You're going to pick them up. They flew them up for you. Yeah, flew them okay. up. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so, so you have a habit of getting on a horse's bareback and chasing banditos and monkeys. Yeah, I didn't have time to saddle them. Something happened like that fast, you know. <laughs> you just got to jump on with a halter and go. Yeah. No banditos. These were like little banditos, weren't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were. 
They were really cool monkeys. I really liked them. Okay. Merely, she didn't like them so much after because she fooled them all the time to get them dressed. Yeah. And everything, but she, she wasn't in love with them, but she tolerated them. But I really liked them. Yeah. So where do you get monkey get... outfits? Where do you get the cowboy hats? Merely Mer- Mer- made her, made her outfits for him. Okay. Well, we went to a store one time, took the monkey in, got some doll clothes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bought them. I, I I made shafts for them, and they had little cowboy hats they wore. And, okay, you know it was pretty neat. They had a little western saddle on. <laughs> that is pretty neat. That is pretty neat. I'll be darned. Yeah, right. she she did that act for over twenty years. Really? Yeah. With with the same yeah, two monkeys. Loved, everybody loved it with same two monkeys. Yeah. yeah good grief. So you wasn't just picking up. You wasn't just bulldogging. You wasn't just bronc riding. No, you, everybody, a lot of acts too. Man, and the amount of work it takes to go up and down the road hauling all that stuff, chores and packing and, yeah. you know, everything. Oh, well, yeah. I had to, you know, when Marilyn's act was up, I had to go out and carry the obstacle, pedestal off for her, mm-hmm. the gates for the dog, the pedestal for the horses. You know, was, we're going all the time when the road gets start. You bet. You bet. Isn't that something? All started with getting a horse when you were 12, right? <laughs> yeah, that's all started. Well, that's that's interesting. Very, very cool. My 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 boy got got bit by a camel really bad one time here a few years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was he almost lost his arm. Really? Where did where did where did the camel catch him? Well, he won the trailer to feed him, and he was shaking out the feed. <clears throat> it's a big bull camel. The camel grabbed him by the arm, by the wrist. Oh, wow. And I mean, picked him up, and I mean, was we'll slam them from side to side of the trailer. And, and he he fought that camel and fought him and fought him. And this kid that worked for him, he come running in there. Well, he wasn't about to do anything. And Wade was hollering, and hi- another hired man was just leaving. Well, he came back in and he saw what was happening. He grabbed the pitchfork and stuck the camel and got him to drop him. Wow. Well, he dropped him and, and he drug him out of the trailer and they had, they airlifted him uh, to the hospital. And his arm was just mangled. I mean, it was just, and he cut all the nerves, tendons, ligaments, everything was severed. Oh, wow. And they worked on him all night long and they got everything put back together and I got his arm healed perfect, and he's still bulldogging with it. Really? He just it doesn't look very good. I mean, it's all yeah, it looks like a chainsaw hit it, but oh my! I mean, but it, his arm's a hundred percent. So but camel locked on. Bad deal. Camel that locked on. Bad deal. Oh my goodness! Sure yeah. sounds like it. See, they get you in their mouth and they try to get you in the ground and kneel on you, and then when they kneel on you, that's that's when it's over, you know. But so he, he tried to. He said, "I stayed on my feet." Okay much as I could, you know. Okay. Because if they kneel on, what do they do? They just keep oh, just biting? Kneel on you, keep biting you. They, okay. kneel, they hold you down and bite you. Oh. I mean, they, they bit the heck out of them. Oh, my goodness. It was, it was pretty bad. Wow. 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 Never, never, man, never turn your back on them, right? They just always no, assume no. the worst. Right. He still works with camels. He doesn't tend to bother them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That that's an incredible story. My goodness. Yeah. It's been a, life's been an experience, I'll tell you. I would say so. My goodness. I just am sitting here thinking of all the people you've met, all the famous horses you've you've hauled around. Two two monkeys that live into their into their thirties and forties. That's that's pretty am- right. that's pretty amazing. Yeah. That's yeah, a pretty was. amazing story. What advice would you get to give to a young person that's interested in the adventures or wanting to have the kind of adventures you have had, whether it's rodeo or you name it, anything, and you've done so much, what's your advice? Well, if some, some young person came to me and asked how they could get into different things, You'd have to find out right away if they're really sincere, or they just was just wanted something to do. You know, they'd have to show you that they they really meant meant it. You know, and I've had so many guys come to me and say, "We want to pick up. We want to pick up." Well, they no more wanted to pick up than 
man on the moon, you know, they just want to get out there. But, you know, if you get the right kid and he really acts like he wants to learn, you know, there's plenty of places you can go learn. Plenty of, plenty of people out there that will help you do in just about anything you want to do, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, if I, got some, if I got a kid that wants to work tigers, I, I know a guy that will show him how. If he wants to work horses, cutting horses, whatever, you know, I've got, I've got people that will be glad to do that. It was old Jack Wiseman. He was quite a guy. Yeah, I put up a reel and and on Facebook and thirty second reel and Marlon was talking about cowboys and bikers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he talked about it was always good to have Jack with you. My my son Wade hauled with him. He did for last for the last two years. I said Jack. I said Jack. This boy really wants to bulldog. Yeah. I said, can you take him? He said, yeah. So he took him under his wing. How old was Wade when he started hauling with him? Probably seventeen. Oh wow! Okay, and and yeah. they went everywhere. We saw him up in oh. the Northeast. We saw him in in New York and oh. Pennsylvania. Oh, that yeah, I could go anywhere. Yeah, my my boy got a, a free scholarship to college in Weatherford, Oklahoma. Yeah, everything paid, and he went to school there so they could be on the rodeo team. Well, Jack would pick him up on Fridays, and they'd go rodeoing and then have him back on Mondays. And finally, he said, I, I can't do this school anymore. He said, this road's killing me. Wow. <laughs> so he had to come home. But Okay. He said, Jack will really, really make you go down the road. You bet. A lot of going. I mean, you're you're somewhere yeah. all the time, right? You're, you're yeah, busy. A good, good guy. guy. Yeah. He really took good care of him. Taught him, how, taught him how to rodeo, taught him how to enter. Taught him how to bulldog. I mean, just did really good with him. Taught him the business. Taught him, business, taught him how to haze. Yeah. He hazed for Jack a lot of times. Okay. You know, he wow. got a big experience out of that. You bet. And Jack did that for years, right? Oh, for lots yeah. of guys. He, Jack rode bulls really good. Bulldog really good. Yeah. Any any particular Jack Wiseman story, Randy? Uh, Jack was telling me that one time we come out of the beer store and and this black guy was standing there and pulled a gun out. Told him to get down on their knees. And so Jack got down and he said, give me your money. So Jack pulled $2 out and threw it at his feet. And the guy got mad. He said, $2, I'm just going to shoot you. And Jack says, I heard the hammer cock back. He said, I jumped up and whooped him. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> I said, well, Jack had a, one time he had a hole in the side of his, bullet hole in the side of his truck he drove around. Somebody took a shot at him. Really? Yeah. Okay. You want a jack on your side, didn't you? Oh yeah. He's I've seen him go and he's pretty tough. <laughs> <laughs> pretty tough. He wow. I don't think you could hurt him, you know. Yeah. Went went a long time. Oh yeah. Long time. Long time. We had a rodeo one time and <clears throat> somebody was hollering about the bulldog and was standing there mocking everybody and Rick Jason jumped over the fence and they started to fight. Well, here comes Jack. And I thought, Oh boy, boy, Jack jumped off his horse and he got a hold of this guy. And I mean, he hammered him. I mean, he took all the fight out of him. <laughs> now there's a lot of things you can do at a rodeo, but I think picking a fight with a bulldogger would be like last on the list. Wouldn't it? That would be the last thing I'd want to do, especially <laughs> nowadays, you know. But. Yeah. Uh, maybe some of these little bull riders or bareback riders, maybe, you know. But a bulldogger? No, no. no they, they'll throw you around like a rag doll. <laughs> yeah. Wade's still going? Yeah, yeah. He was in the Fort Worth and Mesquite last week. Okay. So oh, is, yeah, he's still going. So is he still doing some IPRA stuff or... No, 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 no. He's doing all, all PRCA. All PRCA and, stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He, he always makes that, what's that finals in Louisville. Oh, the Great Lakes? Great, Great Lakes, yeah. He's, I'll be darned. He's made that. He, he's not going to make it there, but he's made it for oh, years. Oh, my goodness. Years. I'd probably watch him rope, or I'd probably watch him dog there then. Yeah, probably, yeah. For he sure. made. I don't know. He's been there going forever, you know. Yeah. Is he still dogging or just roping at this point? Yeah. No, he's, no, he's dogging. He is. He doesn't do much roping anymore. Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't. No. Okay. No, he just mostly bulldogs. Okay. Okay. Like the other night, I, 
I walked outside. And he was bulldogging all by himself. He had steers in the chute. Mm-hmm. Had half a dozen steers backed up, and he had a little got a little chute that he kicks open and yeah. runs out there on foot and throws them. And oh wow, one right after another. Okay. I'll be. I done. remember the the Painter Association was offering five thousand dollar bonus if anybody won the finals on a paint horse and they offered 500 every time you won a rodeo on a paint horse yeah. well wade wade's horse was a paint horse and these 500 dollars checks kept coming in coming in coming in and then he went to the finals and won the average and got five thousand from the paint horse association okay but but he's about the only paint horse was going. Well, five grand to win the average, that's about, from the paint horse association, that's about what the what the average probably paid, wasn't it? Oh, he didn't, yeah, he, I, I think he won 2700 yeah. on the winning the average and got 5000 <laughs> bonus from the Absolutely. paint horse deal. Yeah, well, that's cool. <laughs> that's neat. So was, he was, was hauling. Really funny that, yeah. that, that, that horse belonged to me, you know, and I was going to make a pickup horse on him, and he, made a bulldog in our side of them and we're going to finals. And I said, you know, I said, I'll just sell you that horse. I said, I'll take what I gave for him. No, 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 no. I said, well, if you win the finals, you, there's 5,000, you, you'll make money. He wouldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> he won the finals and he looked at me like, can we still do it? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. That, that was a lot fun. of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Paint horse. Okay. Yeah, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, he was a good horse. And how long did he run him? Oh, he bought him when he was six and six years old, and he ran until he was twenty-six. Oh, about wow. twenty years, I guess. Okay, okay. Yeah, he was a nice horse. Okay, okay. Wow. And some of the stories, and man, you just listen and go, holy cow, the things these guys and gals were doing back then. Like Mm. yourself, I mean, pretty amazing. And I'm always curious, how in the world did you get into this? You know, (laughs) what were you thinking? You know, how did you get (laughs) into this? That's what my wife said when we left. She said, when the tiger does, she said, what were you thinking? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) She said, "Are are you crazy? Yeah. Yeah, and I said, what a way to go. You bet. <laughs> what a way to go. I like that. That may be the name of our episode. What a way to go. What a way to go. What a way to go. <laughs> we hope that you enjoyed this second episode, part two of our podcast with Randy Steffen, IPRA cowboy, IFR pickup man, just so many things he's done. Wild, wild, exotic animals getting in a cage with a tiger. Oh, my. Now, if you do enjoy this episode, please share with your friends. Word of mouth is always the best advertising. We're always looking for for friends to help get these stories out there into the world. And to make your listening easier, you can find us on all the major streaming platforms. Find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Search for Beyond the Shoots, that's C-H-U-T-E-S, and follow us. Like us, rate us, give us comments. Let us hear from you. Uh, subscribe give us a five-star rating in this social media world it helps get these stories into circulation the more interactions there are the higher the ratings are the more they get offered up to a whole bunch of new people and that's what we're looking for now talking about getting things up and offered to a bunch of folks if you like reels you know those those 30 40 second short videos we've got them You can check us out on Beyond the Shoots Facebook page and click follow. Go go watch. I'm telling you, we are having so much fun making these reels. And we just released one with Randy talking about Larry Mahan, the great legendary cowboy Larry Mahan. He met Larry when uh, Randy was 17 and Larry was 19. So we're going to invite you to watch it, share it. Uh, help us get these great stories out into the world. You are our advertising department. So um, do your job, share them, have fun, (laughs) like them, do anything you'd like to do. 
And we invite you to check out our webpage, all the episodes, and we're up over 100 episodes now. So many pictures, so many great, great pictures. Tom Wood's pictures up there, and and um, Deb Vaughn's pictures are up there. So go check those out. And we've got our partners page. Of course, we've got the IPRA up there and, and Parasite Systems and all kinds of great places up there on the website for you to hang out. So come on over, check it out. Love to love to hear some comments and some feedback on what you're thinking. We've been talking about putting up some merchandise, so we'll see where that all heads. And I want to give a great big thank you to Parasite Systems for their support with our podcast. They've been there from darn near the beginning. And we're a year and a half into this podcast. And Parasite Systems, what a great service that they provide to to farmers and ranchers and rodeo cowboys and cowgirls, uh, rainers and cutters and just everybody. Parasite System is a push-button parasitic diagnostic system for pasture animals, your horses, your cattle, your goats, your sheep, and now for your companion animals, your dogs and your cats. And if you want to keep your horses, and we all do, if you want to keep your horses in top condition we got to know exactly what kind of parasites they are fighting you take a fecal sample you take a poo poo pot you send it in to parasite systems they can they can run the test they'll send you an email back they'll tell you exactly what it is uh parasites and how many eggs per gram and all that sort of thing and you take that to your vet and say this is what i'm fighting your vet will say this is exactly what you want to do to treat them there is a possibility of eradicating parasites from our farms and from our ranches. So you want to you want to check them out, Parasite System. You can find them at Parasite, S-I-G-H-T, systems.com, ParasiteSystems.com. We've got a coupon code, BTC023, for 50% off your mail-in test kits. And you can find them on a partner's page up there on BeyondTheShoots.show. And another shout out. I listen to a lot of podcasts about a lot of different subjects. Rodeo, racing, politics, health, spiritual, you name it. It's out there. I listen to a lot of stuff. Uh, I want to encourage you to listen to Rodeo Roots podcast. Rob and Dan again and Blue Jeans. They're out in the world. They are they're rodeoing hard. They're traveling a bunch, and they're recording some great, great interviews. And you can find them on all the major streaming platforms as well. They just did a great interview with Robbie Hodges. It's so important to get these stories recorded. One day, one day, this is my prediction. One day, these stories are really going to matter, folks. After we're after we're gone. Folks are going to find these stories and go, my goodness, somebody, somebody, somebody shared these stories, recorded these stories. It's going to matter. And a big thank you, speaking of sharing memories and, and recording memories, a big thank you to the IRA Project Facebook group for all their help and guidance. Mr. Tim Sparks, thank you for all that you do. And of course, Marlon Harris. You really helped us connect with the rodeo greats of the IPRA and introduced us to a bunch of new folks. As a matter of fact, right now, Marlon Harris is on his way to Guthrie, Texas to the Four Sixes Remuda sale, the annual sale they have out there. He's going to be rubbing elbows with a lot of important folks out there. Taylor Sheridan. Yeah, Yellowstone fame is actually going to be out there and we are going to be recording with uh, we're hoping to let me say it this way hoping to record with Marlon as he as uh, he'll give us an update on what uh, what happened out there to four sixes wow covered a lot of ground today a lot of good stuff going on this is beyond the shoots until next time this is Doug Simcox thank you for listening